All right, let's talk about some very important player news, take an overviewed look of the Chiefs' recent OTAs, and note a standout receiver that is not named Justin Ross and much more. But first, how about those? Hey, Cole, this is Lou Foles and Curly. And I just want to say, how about those Chiefs? What's up, guys? My name is Cole, and I do daily news about the Chiefs and the NFL overall, so I'm going to need you to sub if you're new. Hit that like button if you think Orlando Brown Jr. should not be paid top tackle money. And let's get into this news featuring some much-needed, very important player updates like Josh Gordon being seen out on a golf course working on his drives and his cute little chips as he entered to be Patrick Mahomes' alternate for the match with teammate Josh Allen and the old guys. That part was a joke about him being an alternate, but there you have it, Josh Gordon golfing. You can also see that Juju traveled to watch not the fake Madrid, but the real Madrid beat Liverpool in a high-scoring 1-0 soccer game in which Real Madrid won some sort of title thing. And then, back in the States, Willie Gay could be seen singing a song with a mint on his tongue and then looking at a shoe that may or may not resemble an actual tumor. And we can't forget about Juan Thornhill out here living his best life now in Florida. He's on a yacht, chilling like a villain and then cooking out burgers and brats. Important news that you guys have to know. And then here's a wild clip of Derek Henry doing speed drills, which is honestly quite the sight to see. He can literally run uphill faster than some could run downhill, including myself specifically. I mean, that is pretty ridiculous. I wish, I wish he was on our team, not gonna lie to y'all. And here's something you all must know right now. Due to the significant amount of importance, at least, Antonio Brown showed up to a fan-controlled football game last night and during an interview that I couldn't find actual video of because nobody actually cares that much about what this guy has to say in reality, he said he will not be playing in the NFL next season. Nah, don't play yourself looking at me to play. Well, Antonio Brown, do not play yourself, bud. After burning bridges with every team you've played for, the Bucks leaving in the middle of a game last season, the Raiders getting released without playing a game, and the Steelers after demanding a trade, Antonio Brown still thinks teams would want him on their roster this upcoming season. Well, man, I hate to break it to you, but nobody, in their right mind at least, wants you on their freaking team, even though you are a freak of an athlete. Let's not get it twisted here. He finished fourth in yards per route run last year behind only Cooper Cup, Debo Samuel, and Devontae Adams, and has finished top seven in YPRR in six of his last eight qualifying seasons. So he's still a talented receiver, no doubt, but too much drama for me mama. It's honestly a very sad ordeal, and my suspicion is he probably knows that it's very unlikely he plays for another team this season and just wants to get ahead of it all, refusing to let his pride take a hit at the fact that it would more than likely come to light that no team wants him next season. Back on May 16th, Antonio announced that he just wants to retire a Steeler, which, after playing for that many seasons for them, you think would honestly happen, but who really knows? And the most incredible thing about all this is there will be some crazy team that will more than likely offer Antonio Brown a spot on the roster sometime during the season as injuries happen. But I do not think it would be the Chiefs at least. Hope not. And then y'all wanna see something a wee bit entertaining. Over the last five seasons, 11 teams in the NFL have recorded a total of goose egg, zero playoff wins, and two of these teams are in the AFC West. You have the Cardinals, Lions, Jets, Panthers, Bears, Giants, Dolphins, maybe Tyreek will help break that streak, mm. Commanders, Steelers, and then you have the Denver Broncos and the Las Vegas Raiders. So there you have it, 11 certified dumpster fires, two of them being in our own division, although we all know they have made some nice roster moves, and the AFC West is not going to be an easy fight here during the 2022 NFL season. I have coined it the wild, wild AFC West. And then CBS Sports also released a graphic which includes NFL teams 2022 listed in offense tiers. Not like thug tiers, but you know, like categories. Anyway, he lists the Bears and the Texans as the literal bottom of the barrel. And then you have the Raiders in 12th and the Broncos in 11th, which somehow puts them all the way up in the above 
average category, but I think there was a typo because this category, which features the Broncos and Raiders at least, should probably have been named Patrick Mahomes' children. But I digress. If you look up at the top of this list here in the best of the best category, you have the Chargers at four and the Chiefs at three. Thank you for not putting the Chargers above the Chiefs. That is asinine right now until the season plays out. It's worth noting that this is basically the first list I've seen that does not have the Buffalo Bills ranked as the greatest team to ever see the field ever, ever. Instead, they are in the almost elite category, probably due to Josh Allen almost beating the Chiefs in the playoffs every year, but still choking like a child with chicken nuggets when it matters. The only real problem I have with this list is that the author, Jared Dubin, Dubin, lists a team with a geriatric QB as the most powerful offense in the entire NFL, which feels like a bit of a stretch to me, but hey, it's not the Bills, so I'm grateful for the change of scenery. Okay, now I want to take a look at some recent OTA overview notes from Arrowhead Pride's Pete Sweeney, because there's some definite nuggets in here worth sharing and a notable standout player that I'd like to talk about. First, he notes who is in attendance, but not working. You have cornerback Rashad Fenton due to his shoulder rehab, tight end turned defensive lineman, Kahende Ogini Hassan due to his work visa not being completed yet. And then you have Prince Tega Wanago watching from the side as well. And then not in attendance, Orlando Brown, which is expected. Linebacker Jermaine Carter, I saw on Twitter that he has COVID, so hopefully it's pretty mild for him and he will be good to go soon. Then you have Frank Clark, McCole Hardman with the hamstring tweak, Chad Henney, Darius Fountain, Chris Jones, Lucas Niang, Colin Saunders, Juan Thornhill, and tight end Mark Vidal. So yeah, just a reminder, these are voluntary workouts, meaning not required. Pete Sweeney then notes this was the first opportunity to see Patrick Mahomes throwing out there with the new receiving cast, and of all the new pass catchers, his rapport with Marquez Valdez-Scantling really stood out. The timing made these guys look like they had been playing together for years already, a credit to the work down in Texas. So. That is incredible and worth noting. And I do have a suspicion, a gut feeling really, that MVS is going to absolutely pop off this season. There's some polls going around about receivers and who fans think will really have breakout seasons. And Juju's up there as well as Hardman. But dude, I think it might be MVS if I'm gonna be honest. I just feel it deep down in my soul. Sweeney then says when it comes to other rooms, namely the tight ends, not named Travis Kelsey, Jody Fortson, wearing a full leg length compression sleeve, was working but limited. He moved well and appears to be on the right track, which you freaking love to hear that. Tight end Matt Bushman made an impressive diving catch for a touchdown during seven on sevens. And tight end Jordan Franks caught a TD in the back of the end zone on a beautifully run route during 11 on 11. And Noah Gray also had a nice diving catch as well. So you have tight ends diving all over the place. That's that's great. Feels like the tight end room could be deeper than we realize. Well, first off, I'm absolutely very happy for Jody Fordson recovering from the injury. And second, I love to hear that the tight end room is potentially deeper than we thought. Like when you go to step in a puddle and fall through all the way to China. No idea where that came from. That was actually a really dumb joke. So don't go off script, Cole, ever again. Pete Sweeney continues saying, during the Chiefs one-on-one -on -one period, Cornerback DeAndre Baker managed to intercept QB Dustin Crum. I jotted down one of the reps I saw from cornerback Trent McDuffie, who broke up a Buchel pass intended for wide receiver Juju Smith-Schuster. McDuffie only stands to get better going up against this wide receiver core. Amen to that. A little touch and go in drills. Mahomes looked in distinct midseason form in 7-on-7s seven seven and 11-on-11. 7-on-7, seven seven, you could see Mahomes throwing TD passes to Valdez-Scantling and Kelsey. And 11-on-11 work saw TDs to Watson, Cornell Powell, MVS, and Kelsey. Perfectly lofted passes and bullets. Well, you love to hear that. He goes on to say, and for those wondering and would have asked, Another quiet day for budding fan favorite wide receiver Justin Ross on my watch. Maybe I'm bad luck. Well, maybe you are, Pete Sweeney. Maybe you are. So while Sweeney notes that Justin Ross has remained relatively quiet, aside from the attention on social media he's been getting, which has been the opposite of, he notes that a different Justin has been standing out. And he goes on to say the play of the day was made by wide receiver Justin Watson. Seriously, during 11s, Watson ran a corner route against McDuffie and Patrick Mahomes hit him perfectly in stride in the back right 
of the end zone. All right, well, tuck that little feather in your cap because Mahomes also talked about Watson during his presser saying, Watson's been a pleasant surprise. That dude can roll. He came down to Texas and I threw with him the first day and I called Veach and I was like, how fast is this guy? He was running so fast I was late on my throws. Well, to answer your question, Patrick, he ran a 4.41 or a 4.42 at his pro day back in 2018, but could certainly be faster now. We all know that Mahomes has gotten faster since his 40 time, so it's not out of the realm of possibilities for this to be the same case for Justin Watson. Anyway, the question is, could Watson be a sleeper that ends up making this roster and having an impact on the team? And in case you're sitting there pondering life, scratching your cute little chin, wondering, who the heck is this Justin that does not have the last name Ross? Well, I sure am glad you asked because I have the answer for you. Watson was signed by the Chiefs back in February, but was drafted by the Bucks in the fifth round of the 2018 NFL Draft out of the University of Pennsylvania. And worth noting, back at Penn, Watson set the Ivy League record for most receiving yards in conference play. Well, way to go, you little baller. Anyway, he was a member of Tampa Bay's active roster from his rookie year until this past January when he was waived in order to create roster room before signing with the Bucks practice squad. Watson missed the majority of the 2021 season due to an off-season knee injury that required surgery, sadly, but was activated from the physically unable to perform list, the PUP list in late December, and in his four-year career with the Bucks, Watson appeared in 40 games hauling in 23 passes for 258 yards and two whole TDs. As a special teamer though, Watson also recorded 20 tackles and a sack on a fake punt. And that last bit there is worth noting that Watson has reps as a special teamer, which is valuable at this point in time, in my bearded opinion at least, because a lot of our current receivers are not going to be playing special teams. Let's be honest here. Juju? No. MVS? No. McCole Hardman? Probably not, unless he finds himself returning some kickoffs and punts here and there. So yeah, the ability to go out there and play special teams as a gunner or wherever needed is a valuable skill set to have and something coaches may take a note of when they begin cutting down the roster this year. So my question is, could you see Justin Watson making this roster? Definitely let me know in the comments down below because this is not the first time someone has taken note of him since he joined the team back in February. And if you think he's gonna get cut, let me know who's gonna make it because at this point, I'm lost as to who is gonna make this final roster. The receiving core is pretty deep here. From here, let's look at some of my favorite comments from yesterday. Bev in Boulder sent over a super thanks of $10 saying thanks. Cole, this video is your channel at its best. I love when you save me a whole bunch of time by condensing multiple pressers down into a manageable whole. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome, Bev, and thanks so much for your generosity and support of this channel. And Martin M sent over a $2 super thanks saying, when you dropping a Chiefs rap, Feeling we're all missing out after hearing you spit bars. Love the channel, man. Keep up the great work. All right, well, for those of you who don't know, because I don't really talk about it here on this channel, but I've made hip hop music for over 10 years, and you can just look up my name, Cole D. Roos, and find a bunch of it out there. Anyway, a Chiefs rap will more than likely come out eventually. I feel it in my bones at this point that I have to, and it would be a lot of fun, maybe before the season starts. We shall see, but thanks so much for the super thanks. And just so you all know, if you send me over a super thanks, I will answer them 100% in the next video, but obviously there's no pressure to do so, but that is a guaranteed way to get your comment or question answered. And the top comment from yesterday is from James Edward, which says, let Orlando play under the franchise tag this year. And if he wants to walk after this season, let him walk in my opinion. I think we have 12 picks again in 2023's draft so we could easily get a starting left tackle. And that seems like the majority opinion from you all here, which is not to pay this man top left tackle money and just keep him tagged this year or get him on a more team friendly deal. I will say this though, if we just try to keep him tagged, it's worth noting that Orlando Brown Jr. could play hardball. While he doesn't have the official option to refuse, he could choose to hold out if he wants, but he'd be subject to hefty fines depending on how long he is absent from camp, and despite the NFL franchise tag being guaranteed, you still need to play in order to get paid. Week 10 is the deadline for players to sign the tag in order to play and collect game checks. So yeah, maybe the Chiefs can't 
work something out long term, especially if he wants to be the highest paid tackle in the NFL and decide to keep him on the tag. More than likely he will play, but there's a chance he could sit out. And if that's the case, then what do the Chiefs do? Because I think we would be a little screwed, to be honest. Stephen Young says, should have taken a left tackle instead of CEH. CEH, no way we will pay top money to keep after rookie contract. Well, that's true. Orlando Brown Jr. franchise tag him, then decide after season cut or pay. Jared58 says, hey, Orlando, we already let Tyreek walk with his ridiculous demands. You're not that special, man. Well, I don't know. Because the question is this, what will the Chiefs do this season if Orlando Brown Jr. does not play? Our O-line would be in definite trouble, at least in my opinion. I think we're going to end up paying this man, if I'm going to be honest. It'd just be sad to me if it's top tackle money. Alex Ho says, I fell in love with this channel. Thought this was another boring and repetitive Chiefs channel, but I was very wrong. Been watching every day. Keep it up. Thank you, you freaking legend. Jeffrey Hardman says, hi. Well, Hi back. Are you related to McColl or nah? Please let me know. Kingdom Man says, hello, Chiefs Kingdom. Elias Butcher says, if you're posting daily, I'm watching daily. Well, let's go then, bro, because I'm posting daily. Dustin Cambria says, man's beard so majestic he decided to go bald to make sure no one is distracted from what really matters. And this comment was glorious. It definitely made me laugh yesterday when I read it. Thanks for that. The Piedmont Punisher says, let's take 10 to 15% off there, bud. What Mahomes really needs to work on is his dink and dunk game. We can't have him just chonking it deep when things get dicey. That's just me. Shout out to the bodacious bearded behemoth. Dude, these nicknames are getting wild out here. The bodacious bearded behemoth. I like that. I mean, Mahomes really did work on his dink and dunk game, if we're going to be honest. So... I just like the idea of him being able to have the deep pass option available again if teams stop playing us in that too high shell, which who knows what's going to happen with Tyreek gone, if we're going to be honest. Berlin Donut says, love your show, The Bearded One, watching from the rainforest in mm, somewhere in Brazil. Uh, okay, that is actually awesome. The rainforest, do you live there or what? Let me know, because if so, I may need to visit. Cade Bohr says, you always have my high self cracking up. Best channel on YouTube. Well, thanks so much, man. I'm glad I could make your day or at least some of your day. Make sure to leave a comment below to potentially be featured in an upcoming video. Sub for more daily news like this. And then check out this video here, which is one of my more popular hip hop music videos that I've made if you want to see me spit some bars. So until next time, let's go. Let's go. How about those? <laughs>